Hi, my name is Panchankar and in this video we would be learning how to perform basic model fine tuning. We would be using the multiple linear regression based model we created in our previous session and fine tune it by treating the outliers and addressing issues related to multicollinearity. For those who have not seen my previous video, I would recommend seeing it first for an end to end understanding. I have given the link for the previous session in the below video description. Let's briefly go through what we did in the previous session. In the previous session, we created a separate Python environment for our project. Then we looked at a brief of how car prediction data looks. Actually a correction. The data we were using is not only constrained to cars, it had details about two wheelers as well. So let's say vehicle prediction data. And this is how the data looks. It has details of car name, year of manufacture, selling price, present market price, kilometers driven, fuel type, seller's type, transmission and owner. As part of creating our model, first we collected the data and we did a descriptive study about how the values in columns are represented. Then we did data pre-processing where we did a bit of feature engineering and then encoded the values to make it ready in a format that can be fed into our algorithm. Then we performed outlier analysis and identified the outliers using z-scores. After which, we developed a heat map based on correlation to identify values that is multicollinear. In this process, we identified the multicollinear variables but did not treat it. We then split the data into train and test and then created a model. Based on the model summary, we only considered the variables with significant p-values and then created another model with only the significant variables. Then we validated the model with a couple of checks. One is for normal distribution of residuals and the second is a test of homocedasticity. Finally, we performed the predictions and computed RMSC value which is root mean square error and r square value to measure the efficiency of our model. Then we plotted charts to understand how our predicted and actual values are distributed. I have just consolidated the results in the Excel in this way for better clarity. MLR1 represents the first base model, its respective RMSE score, its r square and an appropriate remark against it. The focus for us here is to reduce the RMSE number and increase the R square value to the maximum extent possible between 0 to 1. As a first step in model tuning, let's first treat the outliers and variables having multicollinearity. If we go back to the base model we created, we have done outlier analysis using Z scores and have identified these rows as outliers based on selling price. Before we take a call on this, let's understand what is an outlier. An outlier is a point that is distant from all the other points. Let's look at the box plot we have formed in our previous session for the variable selling price. If we look at it, we are able to see these points which are not fitting into the distribution of all the other points. These are the outliers we would like to investigate. Why do we get outliers? Well, outliers can be caused by error in input or an exceptional value which is not an error. Some outliers could give us interesting insights while others would be just errors. So outliers are investigated and then it would be decided whether to remove it from the model or to take a different strategy. In this model, however, I am just going to remove the outliers. I am using the drop command to drop the outliers and save it to a new data frame just to make sure the original data frame is unchanged. I am now checking the shape of both the data frames and we would be able to see that roughly 8 rows identified as outliers have been removed. 
Now I am removing the y variable and z score column to make a data frame that has only x variables. Now let's look at the multicollinearity check. First of all, what is multicollinearity? Multicollinearity occurs when strong correlation exists between the independent variables, which is our x variables. Let's see how our multiple linear regression equation looks like. It would look like this. It would have the dependent variable y, which is what we are trying to predict. Then we would have a constant followed by independent variables or our x variables coupled with coefficients. Without going into the details, at a nutshell, what we are trying to do is to arrive at a mathematical equation that would help us to predict y. Let's take an example. Let's say we are predicting the salary of a data scientist using their age and experience. Now, correlation between two variables tells us how strongly they are related. While trying to come up with a mathematical equation to predict y or salary in this example, it is great if one of our independent variables, in this case age or experience, is highly correlated to the dependent variable salary because it means there is a strong relationship between them and it would help in our prediction. But what if age and experience, which are both independent variables, are strongly correlated? Well, in this case, all we are doing is using exactly the same information. This is called multicollinearity. Now, how do we identify multicollinearity? Let's go back to our actual vehicle prediction model. What we have here is a heat map plotting correlation between x variables. Now, in this case, we have only less number of variables, so we can directly see that fuel type petrol and fuel type diesel are multicollinear. In a case where there are huge number of variables, we would use a concept called variable influence factor that would indicate as the variables that would be highly correlated. I'm not going into the details of it in this session, but if you would like to understand more on this, you can research through this methodology. One important question you could have is, what value tells us the variables are highly correlated? Well, that's subjective. Correlation values could be from 0 to 1, which represents 0 for no correlation and 1 for full or complete correlation. In this example, I am just considering anything above 0 0.90 as highly correlated. But based on your use case, it might be different. Now, since we have identified fuel type petrol and fuel type diesel as highly correlated, we will have to remove one of these variables from the data. I am removing fuel type diesel using drop command and then again plotting the heat map to check if there is any other multicollinearity condition that exists. Having a look at the heat map, there are no other conditions of multicollinearity. Now we will split our modified data as test and train and repeat our model generation process like we did it in our previous session. When we do this, and when we look at our R square and RMSC values, we can see that the R square value has significantly increased and our RMSC value has significantly decreased, denoting an improvement in the model's capability to predict the selling price of vehicle. Let me bring the details into our Excel file which has the performance of a previous model to compare against each other. Now, we are able to see the jump in the performance of a model. This is just one step towards our fine tuning. In the next session, we will further try to fine tune this model with other algorithms and compare its performance with what we have created so far. I hope you were able to identify, understand, and appreciate the basic role of outliers and multicollinearity in a model's performance. Thank you very much for your time and attention. 
Stay connected by subscribing my channel to dive into more details and learn more together. Please give a thumbs up and share if you have liked this video. Also, please comment below for any questions in this video and I will do my best to help you guys out.